State governors and the leadership of the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria and Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria have signed an agreement on the modalities and timelines for the commencement of the full financial autonomy for the state judiciary and the legislative arms of government. The deal was brokered by the Committee uh, on the Implementation of Financial Autonomy for the State Legislature and Judiciary Arms of Governments, which was led by the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Mugige. He said they signed an agreement which will be a framework for each of the state governments to grant autonomy to their state legislature and judiciary. Well, joining me to discuss this is Fred Nzako, a legal practitioner, and Emmanuel Abioye, Deputy President of Junsun. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Well, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Nziako. Um, the Judiciary uh, Staff Union have been at this um, issue for a long time, and then even the parliamentary staff workers uh, have been screaming about this issue of financial autonomy. And one would have expected that just as Mr. President had dealt with the issue of local government autonomy, um, you know, mandating the, um, the finance uh, minister to make sure that those monies are paid directly to the local government accounts. Why isn't that done for Junsun? Why do they have to go through this rigors of signing MOUs? Well, um, the background to this strike is to the is fact Zerko, that... Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. The background to, to this strike... Can you hear me, Mr. Zerko? Yes, I can hear you, and I'm speaking. Can't you hear me? Oh, no, no, we couldn't hear you. Now we can hear you. Good. The background to this strike is to the effect that Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria has been asking that the judiciary arm of government at all levels, at state levels and at federal level, be given financial autonomy. And um, Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria also had been at the vanguard of the struggle for financial autonomy to the legislative arm of government at both state and federal levels. And the, the flip side to this is that these are copiously provided for in the Constitution under the doctrine of separation of powers. The Constitution has provided that the judiciary and the legislature should be autonomous um, financially so that they will be able to work. And uh, Mr. President, uh, as a result of the fact that at the state level, especially the judiciary, has not been given autonomy, and Mr. President went ahead to add something to the provision of the Constitution by way of executive order signed an executive order recently asking and directing that the states should allow financial autonomy to the judiciary. Now, Jusim has been on this matter for a long time. This is not the first time, this is not the second time. And unfortunately, at other times, Jusim had reached agreements with governments. But governments, in their usual manner, reneged on those agreements until this time that Jusin decided to take it to a very logical conclusion. And the observers and public analysts and progressive-minded individuals like myself had strongly supported Jusin in this strike. The Jamba Association has also supported Jusin because as much as we know that strikes will be the last resort, but because government is hard of hearing, the government is very fond of reneging on agreements. So Jusin was left with no other option than to take this strike to a logical conclusion. And we are in support of that, not minding the collateral damage it is doing on justice delivery. But what is doing is what doing well. The states are not doing well, and the governors at the governor's forum are not telling themselves the truth about what they should do with respect to financial autonomy to the judiciary. So now that it has come to this point, what the important thing that we should be asking is, would government renege on this agreement again? You literally asked the question for me because I was about to ask you, you have said it so many times in your statement this evening, that government is fond of reneging. Now, yes. we've seen cases with ASU, with other bodies, where the government will sign MOUs, they will come to the table and have agreements. And six months down the line, one year down the line, people are back on the streets protesting 
and you know striking again because government has reneged and and what beats me uh, barrister is i'm trying to understand why it's not necessarily one government but successive governments keep doing this and they're getting away with it is there nothing that the, the, the these unions and judiciary workers can do other than strike uh, constitutionally to hold government to account the terrible thing about the thing is that it has become a systemic thing that Nigerian government is run in a voodoo manner, where the government is not sincere, not honest, not truthful with the people, where governance is not the way it should be. And that is why it comes across various governments. And when we say government, we are not talking about the current government because we had the similar experience in other governments in the past. Nasu had the same experience. Nasu the same experience. NMA the same experience. Um, Nigerian Labour Congress the same. Virtually all organized private sector that signed any agreement with the government at all levels have had bitter experiences of government not keeping up to their agreement. And that is the worrisome aspect of it. And that is why from time to time we relapse to strike we relapse to wastages of man hours, we relapse to issues that are not progressive and that do not add to the development of the country because mm -hmm. the government has failed to do not only what they should do, but what they had promised and put hand on paper that they should do. And that is the worrisome aspect. And that is why when we say that we need to restructure not only the polity, but the minds of Nigerians towards honesty, towards integrity, and towards observing the decorum and the tenets of, uh, of uh, agreements. Now, a new agreement is reached. The challenge here is this. The, 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 the Minister for Labor, that is in charge of labor matters in Nigeria, has reached this agreement. But the implementation of whatever that is reached it lies with the state governors. Because at the federal level, the federal judiciary has gained its autonomy, financial autonomy. But the 36 states, out of the 36 states, there is hardly up to two, three states that are giving financial autonomy to the judiciary in the rest of the 36 states. So whatever that is agreed this time as a result of this strike will be implemented by the various state governors. Are the governors part of this agreement? Are the governors, have they addressed themselves of the need to respect this agreement? These are the major issues because it will be very on, on, on unfair to Nigerian system, very unfair to Nigerian populace, that after all this length of strike, we see come back to to ground zero. Okay. I think it will be very unfortunate. All right. Um, we, we have uh, the Deputy President of Junsun joining us um, via Zoom. Um, Mr. Emmanuel, you heard what Barrister um, Nzako has said about the government's reneging on all of the previous promises that they have made uh, in time past. Uh, but how, are you, how do you intend across the 36 states to hold these governors accountable? I hear from this report that the, governments, uh, the governors and the leadership of your union and the Parliamentary Staff Association uh, is signing this MOU, but how committed are they? Uh, you, you were obviously in that room. What is the body language of the government? Is there a certainty that they have re realized that they must work with you and, um, uh, and uh, one way or the other make sure that they make their promise or keep to their promises? Or do you still have any form of skepticism? Are you worried that or concerned that the governments might renege again because this is their nature? Um, you know, like the council said earlier, we have been on this matter for a very long time, but to go straight to the point, uh, the question has to whether the body language of government is, uh, is pleasing to us. It would be too early for us to judge that the government will not honor the agreement that was just uh, reached yesterday. So the agreement reached yesterday is to the effect that um, the, the strike that's ongoing is suspended as long as the government uh, credit the accounts of the state judiciary with the allocation that due for the judiciary. So we have been on this for a very long time, and uh, we are just hopeful that the needful will be done this time around. Uh, 
not minding the fact that the uh, histories of uh, each of our governments in the time past would not cope because in good faith we have uh, done what we, had, we did yesterday. And of course, we cannot um, begin to think that uh, the government will not implement as, as promised. So the both parties have signed this um, agreed together to yesterday. So we're hopeful for, we can't say for now whether the government are ready to honor, but we believe that in good faith they will honor this particular agreement. Yes. Now, um, I just have one more question because we have just a minute to go to wrap this up. Um, we know that in certain states, the governors are very generous and very good to judges and you know, but then in this government, you also have, you know, lawyers who are working as attorney generals, you know, with the governor, whom people who you as Junson would think would be fighting on your behalf. Um, but the gov the governors, like in River State, the governor is very generous to judges. He's giving them cars. He's uh, better, bettering their lot. How come these people don't seem to be fighting for the rights of judiciary workers? Because if we're asking for an independent judiciary, then there has to be some form of financial autonomy. Or could it be that maybe those judges and the, the Attorney General are not necessarily worried because um, they do not feel a need that the, uh, there should be an autonomy of sorts for the judiciary financially? When you're talking, thank you very much. When you're talking about generosity, um, we believe it has no basis in running the system consistently. For instance, there is a law in place. You can only be generous to somebody by way of paying such a person back. We believe that except we will allow the system to run on the rule of law, I mean, the place of generosity will, will not stand the test of time. Perhaps as a chief judge, you have the governor of the state as your friend or former classmate, definitely there will be a cordial relationship and there will be an extension of uh, generosity to, to the extent of uh, taking care of, um, you know, the, the, such a chief judge, if there's any situation like that. But it, what about the case whereby, I mean, the, the both, part, both, both the chief judge and the governor of the state they, they are not really in good time. What happens? Uh, it will be a payback pay time, perhaps, in a negative way. So, but if there's, there's a system in place and the system is allowed to run naturally on the rule of law, there wouldn't be any in place of somebody being generous. It doesn't mean that you don't like the face of somebody. So, because of that, you will stop the, that person who is the head of an arm of government of fund and expect him to be on a scene or a news before he can give what is due to him or her. Okay. You know, so yet it is the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is very clear as to the way the government should run. Okay. So and we are saying that we are in this, uh, in the era of democracy. Democracy should be allowed to run on the rule of law. All right. So the system has to be established on the rule of law. And in this Instance case, we are talking about the grand norm, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, generosity of uh, whoever is in government now, as the head of the executive arm of government, towards any head of thought, which is the chief judge, has no basis with due respect. So, what we want is let the system run on the rule of law. Right. Let there be separation of power as it is enshrined in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let there be financial autonomy for the arms of government that meant to be, according to this, uh, you know, established rule of law, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. Well, I want to thank you. Emmanuel Abiyoye is the Deputy President of June Soon, and Fred Nziako is a legal practitioner. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Our time is done. Many times. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us on the show today. Well, uh, I want to thank you all. I hope that um, we will be back next week with more interesting conversations on Plus Politics. I am Mary Annacombe.